All right, hey, good afternoon. So this is uh, this is Brian Allen, freelance artist. I uh, stream live every Friday. I'm going to be doing a kind of shorter run today. Uh, I'm a little bit behind on some things, but I had some requests from some viewers to try to show my process for designing a logo. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity here since I was working on a new logo today. Um, I'm working with a new brand called Dart Addicts. They, uh, they sell, I'm not sure exactly what they do, but they sell things in the dart industry. Um, I'm not sure if they're apparel company mostly. Um, those are usually things you'd want to know before designing a company's logo. Uh, so this is, the, this is my process, basically. I usually start with three rough sketches for a new customer. And what I'll do ahead of time is go uh, into Photoshop and lay out three different text styles. And I've got them labeled A, B, and C. Okay. Then I take the, that text and bring it into uh, Clip Studio Paint. And I will add things to it. Like I'll, I'll kind of sketch on top of the text to make it a little bit my own. As you can see here, I've kind of modified the text a little bit in different areas. Um, doing it in a really rough way because at this point it is still a sketch. I, I kind of want it to look um, a little hand drawn when I can. All right. Then what I'll do is draw a really quick rough thumbnail idea uh, in blue. And you can see here one idea is just going to be a, this was the client's idea. Uh, a dartboard with like a big mean angry face and he's biting into a bunch of darts um, and the other idea that I had was a uh, like a more um, conservative idea would just be a dartboard with a couple of big darts and like maybe it's on on fire and the third idea um, I mentioned I was a little behind. I haven't had, had a chance to explore the third idea yet. But so today what I want to do um, is just draw this first idea and put a little bit of time into it and then I'll be finishing up the others. So let me go here. And I'm just going to reduce the... Uh... Oh, and so before I start drawing, the what I would do when we're finished here is I would present all three of these sketches to the client and we, uh, I would explain my ideas. I don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time on this because only one of these is going to be chosen. Um, and there are some rare cases where none of the ideas work and we have to continue doing rough sketches. So if you spend a whole day on this and you lose all of that, you're in a lot of trouble. So it's really important to try to keep your uh, sketching stage to uh, maybe, you know, I, I try not to spend more than like an hour and a half on a round of sketches. Uh, this is going to take a lot longer just because I'm, I'm taking the time out to explain it. Um, but, but that's what we're doing here. So as you're drawing, you need to make sure that you're not getting caught up in a lot of the details and you really just try to capture the idea. Um, but of course, it's a balance because if you don't put enough into the idea, then you're not going to get your client excited about it, and then um, you're you're starting from scratch again. So, so let me get started here. I'm going to be using a pencil brush uh, called the 2B Real Pencil. Yeah. And uh, anyone who's watching, if you have any questions please feel free to ask and I'll try to address them.
And the tricky part here is going to be figuring out how to make something that's like a dartboard is very flat, right? It's not spherical at all, obviously. So how are we going to make it look like this thing is coming to life and it looks like the shape of a head, but still remains flat? And uh, we'll, we'll just have to figure that out as we, as we draw. I think I've said before that my uh, my teeth are really crooked, my bottom teeth. So I like to give all my characters just a really nasty crooked tooth smile. I saw the uh, Justice League movie this weekend, and uh, and did not really like it that much um i saw wonder woman i saw superman versus batman and they've all been i don't know they've been disappointing but i, I don't know if i'm just kind of growing out of superhero movies to begin with because it's been a while since i saw one that really got me pumped i think um even like avengers and uh uh, what's the uh, the Captain America ones? They're really cool, but I feel like uh, you know, a day later after I see them, I can't even really remember what happened. So I might not be their target audience anymore. I don't know. I haven't seen the new Spider-Man. I heard that was pretty good, but I've already seen like a dozen Spider-Man movies, so I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to commit again. Hey, I want to answer this question by Sean, um, asking how much time I spend penciling. It uh, it varies a lot on what I'm doing. Um, me personally, since I'm going to be the one inking most of my drawings, I actually I don't put as many details into my pencil drawings as like a traditional comic book penciler would, for example, because they really have to make sure that everything is really well thought out and laid out for the inker but since I'm making my own stuff I kind of I try to solve a lot of problems in the ink stage which uh, has its pros and cons for sure but uh, I as I said at the beginning of the video here when I'm just sketching logos um, I try to commit maybe like an hour and a half to do the uh, the sketches um, because if you're putting in more time than that, and that's like a round of three sketches. If you're putting in more time than that, then that probably means that you are spending too much time on the detail and not enough time on the concept. And uh, just for the purpose of this video today, I'm probably going to spend more time detailing this guy than I typically would. Um, But there's no, I don't think there's any hard and fast rule. But if you, if 
you're a freelance artist and you're spending your whole day uh, doing sketches, then that's going to be really tricky uh, to make a profit, really. Because a lot of times, maybe not a lot of times, but there are times when you'll spend your time making the sketches and you'll show them to your client and none of them hit their mark. You know, so you got to start over. If that took you a whole day, then you're in a lot of trouble. Now I always have uh, a secondary window here showing the logo smaller and as you can see it's flipped uh, horizontally. This helps me get an idea of how like, the illustration is coming together as a whole. And in when doing logos in particular, that's extremely important because to be an effective logo it has to read really well at a small size. Um, it also kind of helps me from getting caught up in the details as well. I think what, so what I'll do is have some tips like coming out here so it looks like he's breaking them. Hey Brian, how you doing? Hey Brian, I got your message today about the website and um, I, I'll be getting back to you as soon as I can. I, it sounds exciting. I just um, have been extremely busy today. It's been nuts. Now when I design logos, I try to make the text part itself interesting uh, on its own because normally when we're finished, I'll be sending this in three parts. It'll be the logo with the mascot and the text, and then I'll send it by itself and the text by itself. That way, there's a lot of different uses for it. All right, so this is gonna be tricky. We got the dartboard part. Um, one thing Manga Studio has that's really cool is this concentric circles guide. Let me show you how this works. So I can lay this down. Let me just get it the right spot.
and it allows me whoop, hold on it allows me to draw a perfect circle here and then without moving the guide I can then draw another perfect circle concentrically just like that it's very cool so I'm looking at a picture of a dartboard right now I don't I don't need it to be a hundred percent accurate right now because this is just a sketch and I'll explain that to the client but I gotta kinda get something that that works here um, what I think I wanna do is I think I wanna make it so that the the wedges start to like warp and bend with his face here. Let's see how that looks. So, turn that off for a second. And a dartboard's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, I lost count. One, two, three. So, is that 19 wedges? Or 20? 20 wedges so um, I think most likely what I would do is after this sketch if the client wants to go with this one I'll get a, uh, a picture of a real dartboard lay that over top so I can kind of draw exactly where the, the right ratio for these different sh wedges All right, so what I want to do is, I think, curve them. Hey, Lori, what's going on? All right, so now that I've got the main area down, I can turn off the blue line. And I'll just sketch in some numbers. All right, cool. So this would be, this is pretty rough, but this would be one of the first versions that I would send to my client um, as draft A. And if they 
approved of this, they would e they would usually approve it as is, or they would have a little bit of uh, commentary on things that they like, things they don't like, and then I would normally either go straight to a more detailed ink drawing where I clean everything up, or what I would do is, uh, if they have a lot of changes, take those changes and draw a more detailed uh, pencil drawing sketch. Alright, cool. I like that. So now what I can do, um, this sketch here is more conservative. I think I'll finish that later. With this one, um, this idea was just something I wanted to do on my own. Um, the client didn't have any of these notes, so most likely they're not going to be choosing this one. But I like to kind of throw... Uh, sort of a third sketch in that's just my own idea and um, often it can be the one that they like and so what I wanted to do was a like a Jolly Roger kind of skull and crossbones except just a skull with darts underneath so Trying to decide if this should be like a three-quarter skull or just like a straight-on skull, just like a Jolly Roger flag. Let's see which one looks better. Um, yeah, it looks all right. Let me see how it would look. Perfectly symmetrical. Let's see. Oops. I think the symmetry would work better to look like a Jolly Roger. It's just that this text isn't symmetrical, so I don't know if that's throwing it off. Oh, hey, I'm sorry. It looks like I've been missing a ton of comments on YouTube. Um, I didn't have the window open. I'll try to get to those in a second. So, yeah, I'm going to try. I like the symmetrical idea So, because I think it comes across better as a Jolly Roger. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, let's see. So I want to answer Greg H.'s comment uh, asking what other Smith – micro products do you use and recommend besides manga studio of course so manga studio 5 you guys have all heard me say is is fantastic um i actually haven't tried any other smith micro products uh i know that they have some kind of animation program uh i think i've never tried that um what else do they have i don't know it, let me throw the question back at you. Have you ever used any of their other products and do you recommend them? I, I'm not even sure what they are, but I think they're a really good, cool company. 
you know, I like this software a lot. Um, I've also, they're very, as opposed to Adobe, for example, like if you have an issue, you can contact them directly and they help you out with it. Whereas like Adobe pretty much just points you to their forum and their forum is just, just filled with people like, you know, begging for help pretty much. Um, I don't know. I got problems with Adobe. So this skull, I just realized like, I doubt these guys want me to make it look creepy, right? Um, so I'm gonna have to do something to the skull to give it a little more personality. But that's basically the idea. So right now I'm sketching with like this shading brush. Um, and I find it's a really quick way to block in shapes without getting uh, caught up in the detail. So now that, now that I have the basic shapes down, I'll go in and, and figure things out. Um, I see a question here about whether I'm using Clip Studio Paint Pro or EX or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of confusion about the difference between Clip Studio Paint Pro and Clip Studio Paint EX or, or whatever the different versions are. And um, the differences are really, really subtle. And basically, I am using, I, I believe I'm using Clip Studio Paint EX, but you could easily do everything I'm doing in the normal version too. The normal version really just adds some functionality with their, their uh, it's like their page builder where you can basically create a whole comic in this program and it, it manages your pages, which is, which is very cool. Uh, but I'm not, I don't do comics. So um, the only reason I purchased EX is because I was working on a children's book at the time. So I thought it would be useful to have have it manage the pages, and uh, it ended up being kind of worth it. Uh, but I ended up just kind of using Bridge instead. Um, they probably wouldn't like me saying that, but there might be some other differences between Pro and EX that maybe I'm missing. If anybody knows of those, you know, please let me know. Hey, I got a comment here from Clark Thompson saying that you upgraded to the Wacom 13HD nine months ago and it's been out of the box twice. Is that sad? So I'm wondering, I'm wondering why. Or is it you don't like it or is it just you're, you're too busy doing other things? I had the 13 inch one uh, actually for a while and I didn't, I actually didn't end up using it either, but that's because I had this big one here i thought that i would use the little one like connected to a laptop but it ended up just being like way too much trouble to plug it in and uh, you'd have cords running everywhere and it was kind of a mess so behind this guy i think i want to make it part of the logo some kind of circle maybe Yeah, and then just some lines. I'm trying to keep in mind when I design a logo like this that it's got to also, even though I'm going to color it in full color, it's got to also look good just as a as a one color deal. I don't know. I was just thinking if this should be a dartboard behind him, but I don't know if that's just way too much. I think that's way too much. All right, I was supposed to make this guy happier. All right, cool. So I, I got my blue line now, and I'm going to turn that down. 
and then do another pass in black and white. So Tim Adams is asking a really good question here, uh, but I'm, I'm going to get to your question in one second. There's a couple other um, really quick questions that I want to answer. Um, Don Scott is asking, is this, is this designed for t-shirts? Uh, yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be for a brand called Dart Addicts, and uh, they hired me to create the logo for their brand. They're a uh, apparel company that specializes in in darts um, like professional darts and uh, so Roman is saying that Roman you you recently purchased my clip studio paint brushes which I really appreciate thank you for that um, but saying that you're a little overwhelmed by the amount of the brushes and don't know which one to use so well Sorry about that. Um, the thing with the brushes, I agree there are a lot of them. Uh, there's like a hundred in each volume and I got two different volumes. The reason there's so many is that every artist draws differently, right? So myself, I probably use maybe 15, uh, 15 brushes over and over again. You know, I don't cycle through all hundred of those brushes, but I know that some of those, one of those brushes is going to work for one guy and then another is going to work for another guy. Um, I've had brushes recommended to me from artists that I really admire and then I try the brush and it just, you know, it feels like painting with a rock. You know, it just doesn't work. So I wanted to include a lot. Um, but I would say if you are learning this program, um, you actually don't want to get started right away with custom brushes. I would spend some time first just working with the brushes that come with the program. Uh, then once you feel like you've mastered those, then you can start messing with the custom brushes uh, because, I, I don't know, that, that would just be my recommendation. Um, because you don't want to run into an issue and then all of a sudden you're blaming it on the brush or you know you're wondering if if you even like this program when maybe it's the brush's fault. Um, but a lot of those brushes in there, you got to remember, they're like special pattern br brushes. So there's brushes that help you draw ropes and uh, uh, textures and things like that. Most of those you aren't going to use that often. You're, those are just for uh, special effects when you need them, you know. So the draw, the pencils and the ink brushes are probably the most commonly used in the set. So I would start there. I hope that helps. Um, so Tim Adams is asking me a really good question saying when you're working with a client what is the balance between what the client wants versus your own personal style so the longer I do this job um, it becomes a, a much higher percentage of my style versus what they want because now most people who hire me want my style like they are coming to me because they liked what they've seen and if I drew in another style, they would feel cheated probably. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, but it definitely was not always like that. Um, and that's when I started noticing a t kind of a turning point in my career was it used to be that people would contact me and they would attach an example from a famous artist, uh, you know, and like let's say like God Machine or something. They would attach an example and they would say, hey, I want something like this. And they'd say, can you draw like this? And then it would be my job to draw like that, right? Uh, the trouble with that is that that really doesn't help you f really improve very quickly and it doesn't help you kind of find your own voice. Um, so you want to try to just keep improving your work as quickly as you can so that you get out of being that guy, the guy that people hire 
when they can't afford the other guy, if that, if that makes sense. Um, I can't tell you how to get there other than just, uh, just lots of, of work. It's lots of practice. Um, so, so anyway, if you're talking about like the idea part portion of it and not so much the style, um, I really like, as I'm doing right here, I like to include a sketch that's just my idea. Uh, so if the client gives me two ideas, then I throw in my own idea. Um, often it's the one that's picked because, you know, we are the professionals here. Um, you know, my client, my clients usually have never designed a logo and, you know, I've designed thousands, right? So, um, we are the professionals. So there's nothing wrong with you taking some time out to suggest an idea. Um, you shouldn't feel like you you should do exactly what the client says every single time. Um, this isn't like ordering a pizza, you know. That being said, you can't. You also can't ignore what the client is asking for. So that's why I I like to do both because um, it shows a little. It, it's almost like you're giving them a bonus. And uh, and worst case scenario, they don't like it, and you still got a sketch that you can use later. You know. Make sure that that's included in your contracts, by the way, guys. If if you are working with a client, and you want to have it in there that any unused sketches belong to the artist, you, uh, because you know every time I do a project, I probably have uh, I create two other sketches at least that aren't used um, and you don't want to just throw those away you might be able to use those in another project that's a good question Hey, Roman um, is asking a good question, asking, why do I have two streams running at once? Um, I'm actually, I'm trying to figure that out, to be honest, because the way that right now I'm streaming to YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, I'm not Instagram, uh, Periscope and Twitch at the same time using a program called Restream, um, which is very cool. It's, it's, I'm really glad I'm able to do that. The thing is, is it allows you to stream to something called YouTube Events and YouTube Now, I think is what it's called, or, or something of that nature, right? Um, and I, I personally don't know the difference between the two, so I just have both checked off. So I am essentially, I'm streaming to both of those at the same time. I have no idea if that's a good thing or not, uh, but I noticed that when this video is done, you know, I have just about as many views on one of those as the other. So it seems like people are finding the video on both of those outlets, right? Uh, so I got to ask one of my, a guy I know who knows about this stuff as to which one, um, which one to do. So I'm sorry if that's confusing. It's confusing to me too. So I'm trying to figure it out. Thanks for your patience while I figure all this stuff out. All right, cool. All right, so I'm going to grab a concentric circles guide here. That's way too big. Make it an oval.
<clears throat> now I love being able to sketch logos digitally because there's so many advantages. I mean, I mean just those guides right there are really helpful. The ability to draw symmetrical is really helpful, but the ability to kind of mix it in with the text at the same time um, is so is so useful because when designing a logo, the text obviously is a big, big part of it. And a lot of times, I, I used to sketch on paper a lot more for logos, and you'd I, what I'd find is that I'd draw a really cool image, but then I'd have to scan it in and kind of, you know, monkey wrench it into fitting with the text. And it, it often just never worked. Uh, maybe not never, but didn't work as well, you know. So I love being able to do this digitally. If you don't know what to draw, just draw stars. Usually works. All right, cool. So this would be option C, and um, I just need to draw something around the text here. Probably need to make that bigger. And I think now I need to, this dart needs to be more in the middle, so, so it's more symmetrical, I think. Or, wonder if it needs to be on, now, nah, it's not going to work on one line. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. I just think that this needs to be way bigger. The text. Um, draw tensile uh, is asking if I'm working on a vector layer or a raster layer. So when I'm sketching like this, um, I normally just work on raster layers because since this is just a sketch, nothing needs to be print ready. So it doesn't really matter if I need to be, you know, the, the purpose of working on vector layers is that you can resize without losing any quality or anything. Um, in this case, that doesn't matter. And uh, I like vector layers, but there are some limitations. Some of the tools don't work. Um, so I usually just avoid that by just working on raster layers whenever I can. I think this needs to be like a swoosh or something. Dude. Yeah, there we go. All right. Hey, uh, drinks, drinks right. Made the suggestion of of trying to tie uh, the darts into some kind of to make them look like hypodermic needles and things like that. So it's funny you say that because I 
I was considering something like that. Um, and I could, I could ask the client if they're interested in seeing that or not, but, uh, I, I think it's too sensitive of an issue to be honest. If a client came to me and asked me, Hey, would you recommend we do this idea? I probably would try to talk them out of it. Um, especially today with, uh, with all the problems we're having with, uh, with heroin overdoses and things. Um, if this was for, like, let's say if this was for a musician or something or uh, a smaller business, somebody who's sort of can benefit from being controversial, then that might be a really fun idea, you know? And if you look at my portfolio, I've done some, <laughs> I've done some weird stuff, so I'm not against it. But I think for this business, uh, we want to give them a more professional look, and that's not... I don't think that would be the right direction for them. But it's a cool idea. I like it. Thanks for sharing. All right, cool. Let me shade this real quick. And then I think I got time to just pencil out the third draft. Um, and I can answer a couple more questions. Just a sec. I like to add this this kind of Copic marker gray tone in some areas. That kind of just gives the logo a bit of uh, a bit of depth, so they can see beyond just a black and white drawing. If that makes sense. Whoops. So um, Leonardo Anthony is asking uh, that two months ago you started drawing and since people keep insisting, keep telling you to use Psy, but you like CSP and you'll never switch, why, why do people keep recommending Psy? Uh, that's a paint software if anyone's not familiar with it. So I, I've tried paint tool Psy and um, there are some things about it that function really well. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, the big, big drawback is that they don't have it for Mac, and I use Mac, so for you know, forget it. Um, even if it was for PC, though, uh, I find that Clip Studio Paint is so much more compatible with Photoshop files than Psy was. Um, so that's a huge advantage because I do use Photoshop a lot as well. When this logo is finished, I'm going to need to take this text either into Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator um, to finalize it. So I don't see a reason you can't use both, um, but for me, I, I love, so this was, if anybody's just joining, this was the first sketch we did, and uh, then this sketch... Um, it's going to be a little more conservative. I, I don't know if it's even going to be interesting to watch, but uh, we'll do it anyway. Um, but I think the, the main strength that Paint Tool Psy has from, from people I've talked to is that it has a really great blending. Um, it's supposed to be similar to uh, Corel Painter. But other than that, I think if you like Clip Studio Paint, then just stick with it. Because um, if you're anything like me, I hate learning a new program. Uh, I hate just having keyboard shortcuts in the wrong place. So uh, I think I think there's something to be said for just finding a program you like and just mastering that program. Um, hope that helps.
Um, I see a comment here from Patrick Sullivan uh, asking how I license my artwork, how much it costs, do you sell, do you set your own minimum terms? Um, I feel like, have we talked before? You're, you look really familiar. If you're interested in that, uh, please shoot me an email. Uh, that's kind of a more detailed conversation. But uh, but to any artists who are listening, like I, I really encourage you, when you create artwork, to try to retain the rights to it uh, so that you can license it to other parties. Because um, a, lot, a lot of times you'll be contacted by people who don't have enough money to hire you for custom artwork. But you might be able to work with something that you already have finished. Um, and it's a great way... It's a great way, basically, to get some cash out of people who otherwise would have had to walk away. Um, and it's been really helpful to me in terms of residual income, too. So, definitely worth exploring. I see, here's a big mistake that I see a lot of artists make. Uh, they'll do a design. It's usually like a heavy metal t-shirt design or something like that. And then they'll post on Facebook they'll say design for sale and they'll they'll charge a really low amount like you know hundred and fifty dollars or something like that but when the band pays them 150 bucks they will that means they are selling that artwork to them and they can that artist can never use it again it's gone and uh, I strongly discourage that um, especially if it's a design you made for yourself um, Instead, what you need to do is get a licensing contract and and don't sell your artwork, license it instead. Because I'm telling you, there are things that I did, you know, five years ago that were really, that I really liked. Um, but because I sold that artwork to a brand, I can never use it again, ever, ever. And in some of the, some cases, that brand doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, this is one specific example, so just uh, don't make that mistake. All right, here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this dartboard. All I need to do is basically get the guy to understand, hey, this is a dartboard. Hey, Joe. Hey, uh, draw tensile. Uh, I appreciate the compliment, man. Thanks a lot. Asking me, when can we see a best of Brian art book? Man, what a relevant question because I am working on one now. Um, I want to try to do one every year. I don't know if that's uh, arrogant, but uh, I just bought one from my buddy uh, and uh, Dane Henry Jr. I, I was talking about it last uh, last cast, and uh, it really inspired me that I got to do it, even if nobody buys it. I just want to have it on a shelf. Um, 
So the trick is I've been looking around and it uh, it's really expensive to print a book. So I got to figure out a way to do it in a, like a print on demand kind of way um, so that I don't have to order like a whole garage full of books that might not sell, you know. Um, I'm an optimist, as you can tell. But uh, so I'm looking into that. If anybody has any ideas or has heard of anything, please let me know. Um, the trick with print on demand, of course, is that means it's going to be more expensive and that means that like lower profit. But I'm thinking about just kind of doing it where I don't even really make a profit, just uh, just sell it for cost and, and just use it as a marketing tool, you know. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you even wanting to uh, or considering getting one. So thanks a lot. Um, if you follow me on social media, if I do release a book, I'm sure I'll be talking about it every single day so uh, you'll hear it there yeah a great idea about Kickstarter I was thinking of that or um, there's another one called uh, is it like Indiegogo or something where um, the trouble with Kickstarter of course is if you don't meet your goal you don't get any uh, of the, the money so I'm thinking Thinking like an Indiegogo campaign might be better because that way, that way I'm going to print the book no matter what. It's just that would be more of like a way to pre-order the book, if that makes sense. But uh, thanks, I'll check that out for sure. I was also looking into to Patreon because somebody suggested it last time. And if anybody doesn't know what that is, it's basically like you pledge, you go on there and you pledge money to artists. Uh, like let's say you pledge like five bucks a month and um, the idea with Patreon is the artists try to get as many followers as they can to sort of support them and they have little bonuses each month to give them. Uh, seems like a really cool idea. I feel I would feel pretty weird asking anybody for money except for, for clients but um, the the problem I kept seeing with it is that a lot of my favorite artists are on there and they don't they just really don't seem to be getting enough followers to really make the extra work worth it because uh, it is a lot of work to create those pages and create those rewards um, there are a lot of success stories on there uh, but I don't know I'm not sure if I'd be one of them so Hey Joe, uh, Joe's asking what's it like being so awesome. Um, it's uh, it gets it gets old after a while to be totally honest with you, you know. But thank, good question though. All right, cool. So I'm gonna turn this. No, no, I'm not going to turn that blue. All right, so these are my three sketches that I'm going to show my client today. Uh, we've got this one here, which is what he originally asked for, just like a dartboard coming to life and chomping on some darts. This one here, a lot more conservative. And then like a dart Jolly Roger. I don't know about the – I still am not feeling this text right smack underneath here. Um, I almost wonder if this whole logo might work a lot better if the graphic is here and then the text here. So it's a horizontal logo instead of square. So I might draw that up later. Um, my friend Joe is asking if I've ever considered just drawing counterfeit money. Um, I uh, That's done in like a woodblock style and I'm not... I'm not that kind of artist, so George Washington would probably look like like a comic book Mad Magazine character, and I think that would give it away pretty quick. I don't know why I said George Washington. If you're going to counterfeit money, that's usually not the one you'd you'd start with. Um, see, I'm bad at this already. God damn it, Joe. All right. Well, anyway, I appreciate everybody watching. Um, I'm uh, going to head out. Got a pretty busy day today, but. Uh, if you have any last questions, please send them through. 
Um, I'll show the sketches again one more time. There we go. There we go, and there we go. So, as I explained earlier, these rough sketches would be presented to my client. I'll get their feedback, and then the next stage will be going in and drawing a more detailed, cleaner ink drawing. Um, submitting that for their approval, and then once I get that, I'll go in and, and color it and finish it up. All right, well, thanks a lot, guys. Have a, a great weekend, and I'll see you next week.